Hello, and welcome to St. James Episcopal Church in Wheat Ridge on this glorious Thanksgiving Day. I'm Becky Jones, the rector, and I'm so happy that you're here with us today. I realize that today's festivities may not be as they have been in years past. They may be smaller, more modest affairs. But whether you're surrounded by loved ones or sharing the day with just one or two people or maybe just with your dog or your cat, know that you are not alone today. God has blessed us all with abundance, and for that we give thanks. So please join me in an attitude of prayer as we prepare for worship. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Our opening hymn this morning is, Now Thank We All Our God. confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Wali. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Wali. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all God. And are the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. Thus he is his, and he made it, and his hands have prepared the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord of for he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works, forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Psalm 65. Please join me in reading the psalm for today, read responsibly by half verse. You are to be praised, O God in Zion. To you shall vows be performed in Jerusalem. To you that hear prayer shall all flesh come because of their transgressions. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you will blot them out. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will, show, will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. You make fast the mountains by your power. They are girded about with might. 
You still the roaring seas, the roaring waves of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dusk sing for joy. You visit the earth and water in a it water it abundantly and make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown, crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and let the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them sit, shout for joy and sing. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to all Israel, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters, welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. <clears throat> when you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied. Then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you, for you from the flint rock, and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. Don't say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. Here ends the lesson. lesson. Most high in the glory of God the 
the Father. from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may also share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, He scatters abroad, He gives to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing, and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given to you. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Here ends the lesson. reading from the Gospel of Luke. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, 
have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God, except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Here ends the lesson. Holy Spirit, come, give life to my words. Touch each of us wherever we are today and help us to give you thanks. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. On the way to Denver, Jesus was going through the region between Lakewood and Arvada. As he entered the village of Wheat Ridge, 10 people who'd been exposed to COVID-19 approached him. Keeping their distance, because technically they were supposed to be in quarantine and really not supposed to leave their homes at all, they called out saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. These poor souls needed mercy because just like the lepers of an earlier era, their condition caused great fear. Just like the lepers of earlier eras, they found themselves removed from sight and isolated from all personal contact. Unlike lepers, at least they didn't have to dress in rags and cry out, unclean, unclean. Most of them just settled for sweatpants and comfy shoes. But they did have to cover their faces, just like lepers. And just like lepers, they would be considered contagious until they could once again test negative and be given a clean bill of health. There was a very good chance that some of them would get sicker and sicker and maybe die a lonely death, separated from their families and all their loved ones. Others would never exhibit, exhibit a single symptom, but, but they couldn't work. For them, the isolation and the fear and the loss of income were the greatest struggles. And so they called out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Out of their fear, they call to him. Out of their isolation, they call to him. When he saw them, Jesus said to them, Go, show yourselves at the drive through COVID testing tent. And as they went, they were made COVID negative. Restored to COVID free status, they would be restored to the community. No more quarantine. No more fear that they would die hooked up to a ventilator or worse, that they would be denied even a bed in a hospital because the hospitals were all full. But a funny thing happened on the way to the testing tent. One of them realized his sense of smell had been restored. His cough and his fever seemed to have gone away. And so he turned back and praised God and fell prostrate at Jesus' feet and thanked him. The surprise ending of the story is that the one who turned back was an Episcopalian. He was not only physically ill, he was increasingly isolated in a world where more and more people scoffed at his beliefs and practices. His children had long since stopped attending church with him. Many of his friends and neighbors identified with no religion at all. And many others who did proclaim themselves as Christians practiced a kind of Christianity he could not recognize. They denied science. They preached hate. They embraced racism, tolerated and even perpetuated injustice, made themselves as aggressive and obnoxious as they could, not humble and gentle the way Christ said we should be. But in the return of this one Episcopalian, we have a story that's not just about physical healing. It's a story about the healing of all those things that keep us separated from each other and exiled from God. All of our pain, all of our fear, all of our anxiety is healed in the presence of Christ. Out of our pain, out of our isolation, out of our despair, we cry out, 
Lord, have mercy on us. In the presence of Christ, in the nearness of our Lord, we are healed, made whole, restored to our community and reconciled to God. Our earthly lives are a journey spent for many of us mostly in the region between Lakewood and Arvada, between illness and health, between exile and return. We are all traveling along the way. Because of the frailty of our bodies, we will all succumb to illness at some point in our lives. Because of the devices and desires of the human heart, we will all suffer from the fear and distrust that separates us from our neighbors and from God. But rather than remaining within the darkness of despair and continuing to isolate ourselves even after the public health crisis has passed, our Lord bids us draw near, even as he draws near. He awaits our cry for mercy, and he responds by making us whole, by restoring us to life with others, and by reconciling us with God. And he keeps busy scanning the horizon, looking for others whom he has already healed, whether they know it or not, others who will one day realize that they are already forgiven, that they are already being made whole. They too will return to him and give thanks and praise. Happy Thanksgiving. Today, wherever you are, whether you're alone or with just a few other people, whether you're sitting down to a feast or sitting down to a microwave dinner, may you find the gifts of God graciously provided. And may you live into the fullness of life that God is calling you to. And may you give God thanks and praise. Amen. And now returning to our worship, let's say together the words of our faith as found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Wally. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another with a sign of God's peace. Go ahead. Got to do it with my mask on. <laughs> Peace of the Lord be with you. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi. Nice to see you. The peace of the Lord be always, always with you. The peace of the Lord always be, be with, with you. you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The pilgrims told me you need three things for a successful Thanksgiving. Number one, you need to be thankful, even if it's 2020. I'm thankful for St. James. The second thing is you need stuffing, good moist stuffing, because nobody likes dry stuffing. And the third thing is you must marinate everything. Happy Thanksgiving. Peace be with you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Wally. 
Almighty and gracious Father, we give you thanks for the fruits of the earth in their season and for the labors of those who harvest them. Make us, we pray, faithful stewards of your great bounty for the provision of our necessities and the relief of all who are in need to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Wally. Let us give thanks to God our Father for all the gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank you, Lord, for all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. We thank you, Lord, for our daily food and drink, our homes and families and our friends. We thank you, Lord, for minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. We thank you, Lord, for health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play. We thank you, Lord, for the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. We thank you, Lord, for all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. We thank you, Lord, <clears throat> for the communion of saints in all times and all places. We thank you, Lord. Above all, we thank, give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Wally. Let's say together the prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Wali. Please join with our choir as together we sing our closing hymn, Come, ye thankful people, come.
of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Thanks be to God.